Hey, it's the fish guy with Something Fishy, and today we're gonna to talk about your fish and corals and their diet and nutrition. It's extremely important to make sure that your fish and corals eat and they eat well, but you also have to be careful not to overfeed them. We're gonna go through some of the tips and techniques for feeding your fish, particularly if your tank is managed by our company, what you should be doing on a daily basis in feeding the fish. And I've brought Cortland, one of our showroom aquarists, in to show us just that. So Cortland, let's start with how do we feed just focusing on the fish in our aquarium, what do we do and uh, what kind of food do you have uh, for us today? Well, start off with we've got mysis shrimp for our carnivores and omnivores. Nice meaty substance with a lot of nutritional value. And most fish will readily accept mysis shrimp. So you're just using a turkey baster to put it in the tank? Just a standard turkey baster from your grocery store. One of the things that's important, Cortland, that I see that you're doing is you have a, a cup of uh, these shrimp in your hand, you're not pouring all of it into the aquarium. You just put a little bit in and we're waiting for the fish to eat over several seconds or 15 seconds or so. And once that starts to, to disappear, then we'll continue to add a few more uh, of the shrimp. Is that correct? That's correct. The other thing is that in a reef tank, you have crabs, snails, and uh, different inverts uh, that, and even fish that hide behind the rocks. So some of the food going into the rock base is acceptable in a reef tank. Absolutely. The, the shrimp is more of a, a kind of a snack for them, right? It doesn't have as much nutrition as maybe what we're going to feed next. Very true. So what's next? Next we'll do a product called F2. It's for our herbivores, more of our uh, plant eating fish, such as our tangs, our blue hippo tang in here. So we've mixed this up. This started frozen and it was a mixture of both small and, uh, and medium sized chunks of food so that the different sizes of fish have uh, their selection to eat from, correct? Yes. yes. Next we have some silver sides. There are a couple of fish that like the larger uh, quantities of food. So we have some actual small fish, silver sides for them to eat. So it's kind of an exciting snack. And for our customers, that if they don't want to touch the silver sides, they could either use gloves or tweezers would work as well, correct? Yes, that'd be a lot easier. Plus, keep your hands from smelling like fish. <laughs> So now that the fish are fed, what do we do for our, the rest of the tank, all the live corals? Next what we're going to do for all the corals is we have a slurry of different types of food and that's going to pre, pre, be pre-measured out for each customer as well. That looks like it's got a lot of great stuff in it. You want to try some? <laughs> so again, an uh, oversized turkey baster, if you will, right, for our deeper tank. Yes, the great thing about this product, the Sea Squirt, is it ex is it extendable to 36 inches for your deep tanks. So you're able to take this and, and get it right in the vicinity of a coral, such as this brain here, and inject food right in the immediate area. Now, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but the coral actually has, these, these corals, for example, the brain, actually have uh, tentacles that'll come out and, and open up and grab the food and that'll happen and be exposed in, in the next uh, several minutes or so after the food's put into the tank. If you're a service customer of ours this is a good thing to do uh, on a, a couple times a week maybe a Wednesday or excuse me a Monday Wednesday and Friday schedule. And some of the fish will eat this as well but this is predominantly put into the tank for the corals. What's next? Next we have some seaweed. A lot of fish like to eat on that as a snack and it's gonna remain there for a little while. So it gives plenty of fish opportunities to come up and take what they like. So this is a nice treat. Again, you don't have to do this every day. Again, maybe a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday schedule. This provides some food that's in the tank for a longer period of time. Because of its design on the clip, it's not gonna float away and get caught into the filtration unit and break down, but it'll give the fish something to do uh, for the next couple of hours and just picking at it as they want. If it's in the tank longer than four or five hours, you should just remove it and discard what might be left and you can put the clip away after that as well. All right, so Cortland has shown us the steps that we take in feeding the fish. Let me wrap up with a couple of reminders. First of all, we wanna feed the predominantly the fish once a day. Monday through Friday, if it's in a commercial environment where you're not there on the weekends, if it's in your home, you can feed them seven days a week. Only feed the fish once a day about as much as it can consume over a two to three minute period based on the food that we've provided and prepared for you in allocated containers or uh, what we've told you based on the food that you have. In feeding your corals, you wanna spot feed them about three times a week. If you can do it on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that'd be a great schedule. And we can provide you the tools 
that are necessary to do so if you don't already have them. And spot feeding the corals is gonna really make your corals much more healthier and grow larger um, and actually grow quicker as well. So it's really important to do that. The more often that you uh, provide the feeding, for example, three times a week versus once a week, the uh, larger the corals will grow and the quicker that they'll grow. Uh, another important aspect is the seaweed clip. Having the clip with the seaweed put on it allows the fish to slowly eat over an extended period of time, and that's good to do a couple of times a week as well. You can see the tips that we've shown you. It's fairly exciting to actually watch the fish and the corals eat, and you'll see the dynamics change when there's food put into the tank on both the coral and the fish side. And you know every time you go into your tank, your fish are like little puppies and gonna be really excited about the feeding. So have fun with it, and if there's any questions or anything that you need, certainly give us a call. Customer service for the managed service department is open Monday through Friday from eight to five. Thanks so much, and don't forget to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com backslash fishguytv, our website at somethingfishyinc.com. You can give us a call toll free at 877-FISH-TALK, and you can email me personally at thefishguy at somethingfishyinc.com. As we fed earlier, mice and shrimp, we have a different uh, available options for you. We have flat packs, which are more bang for the buck, or we have the cubes, which are easy to administer. And if you're more on a time crunch, and you just need to go and feed real quick. You can do a cube per tank usually, depending upon what size tank you have. But a little bit easier to administer, whereas this one takes a little bit more time. So you have to figure out what's more important to you. Another product we fed were silver sides. They come in small resealable pouches or flat packs in different sizes. Again, it's all up to you how fast you need, or if you have all the time in the world, you can get the larger flat packs and break them up as needed. Before we fed F2, or Formula 2, which is more for your herbivores like your tangs, and it's gonna be the green cubes. They come in the gel form, where you can break it up with your hands after they thawed out, or they're called RDF, or Rapid Deployment. And it breaks up easily for you, so you don't have to be squishing the uh, gelled food in your hands. We also have Formula One for your omnivores and carnivores. So if you have your clownfish, your cardinals, certain angels, and a large majority of your saltwater fish are gonna prefer the F1 just because it's more of a broad spectrum food. But same uh, administering principle. They're a gelatinous uh, binding agent, so you can squish them together, break up the pieces to different sizes, or get the RDF that breaks away uh, rapidly for you and does all the work. One food we didn't talk about was prime reef. This is a very small, fine piece of food, all chopped up, but still in cubes. And this is great for reef tanks, because many fish are gonna like the smaller particles, as well as the corals. So this is kind of a good, all-encompassing food for corals and fish. But it's also nice to include F1, F2, all the other fo food products we talked about, because like you and I, we all like a little variety in our lives. So you have a lot of diff op different options to choose from. If you don't feel like thawing out your food, we do have them available as flakes or pellets, which are gonna be easier to administer, especially in the daily containers that we provide for you as service customers.